board members. Trina, if you'd like to step up, and Michael and Michelle, step forward at the front of the podium. Okay, like this time I'd like to take roll, starting with Cheryl Mimi, if you will say your name and present. Cheryl Mimi, present. Samantha Towns, present. Ms. Gay, present. Michael McCarver, present. Michelle Reese, present. Okay, let, them, let the record show Sydney Sandy is not, uh, not present tonight. Okay, I'd like to read something that the attorney of the town asked me to read, Rules of Decorum. Unfortunately, over the last several weeks, certain citizens have attended public hearings of this and other town boards and caused disruption, including comments deemed racist and threatening. As a result, I want to clarify to, to those in attendance the following. You may not speak until recognized and invited to speak by this board. Any comments or outbursts from the audience will be considered a disruption of the meeting and the person causing the disruption will be warned once. Upon a second comment or outburst, you will be asked to leave the meeting. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. You may not give your three minutes to another speaker to increase that person's allotted time. We have a box up front here that uh, is color-coded to uh, show you the three minutes and when you have 30 seconds left. Citizens will be expected to be civil in their language and presentation and act within reasonable standards of courtesy. We ask the audience as well as the speakers to maintain order and decorum in your conduct throughout the public hearing. That being said, you may not engage in slander name-calling, personal attacks, or threatening or otherwise aggressive speech or behavior that I or this board reasonably believe will imminently result in a disruption of the meeting. From the chair, the Indian Trail Planning Board strives to maintain a high level of ethics and transparency. Any contact of a board member by a developer outside of the public meetings are deemed not appropriate. Unless it is pertaining to property owned by that board member, 
In this case, that member shall recuse themselves from any planning board meetings relating to that property. All contacts by a developer should be directed to the planning uh, department staff of Indian Trail so as to be presented and discussed in an open public forum. Okay. Uh, the, are you ready for the minutes? Crystal? Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes as presented? I make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Do we I have a second? second? I second the All motion. in favor, raise your right hand. Let that be noted that it's unanimous. Okay, let's see. We are going to hear now, uh, if you'd like to give Tim, give the, uh, the case of CZ2018-0080 Park Meadows. Let me see for the, was that the hub? Uh, this is for the hub mixed use development, CZ 2019-0044 for conditional zoning. This request is to rezone approximately 28.284 acres. Current zoning is regional business district. Proposed zoning is conditional zoning, regional business district, mixed use development. Uh, the acronyms you see there, CZRBD, MXD. The applicant, Grace Star, GP2, LLC, the Moser Group, Incorporated. The intent is proposed construction of 650 apartments and a 105 key hotel. This is the concept plan for the area. It's a little small on the screen. But the hotel is by 74, there's Highway 74, the hotel area here, and uh, the apartments, the apartment area in that location. Here's some of the uh, architectural imagery. Here's the existing site. You can see Highway 74, this location. Chestnut Parkway. And the ball field at that time was under construction. Perimeter of the area is in this location. Here are some photos of the existing site. The left photo is uh, shooting east on Highway 74. The other photo is looking north along Chestnut Parkway. This photo is looking to the west uh, down Nelson Lemon Drive from about the location of the intersection with uh, Shady Bluff Road. This is a little bit bigger view uh, of the area with the hub site. Here's existing zoning map showing the uh, colored areas and their zones. Uh, some of the yellows weren't, weren't quite coming through from our zoning, but SF1 is still town of Indian Trail, SF1, and then the other colors. The other white areas, uh, we have Stallings with some areas here. Uh, Union County and a little strip of Stallings there and another Union County zone at that location. So future land use map showing the location that's here uh, with these areas along 74 being uh, mixed use for the future plans, the comprehensive plan. Traffic impact analysis, uh, mitigation and map. Uh, the uh, traffic impact analysis, the TIA, is, uh, has been received. Uh, the town and NCDOT are still working through that and uh, reviewing that. 
and they will settle on uh, the final improvements with the applicant uh, that are to be made for turning lanes and, and any other uh, striping and uh, any of those requirements that are listed there as recommended mitigation. For schools, uh, there was a school impact analysis. Uh, it was projection for the year 2028-29. Uh, uh, preschool through high school, projected enrollment 204 students. Union County Public Schools provided input. Uh, they stated that the school the schools that they would fall within, uh, Indian Trail Elementary School was showing 92% capacity. Sun Valley Middle School is at 100% capacity. Sun Valley High School was with 101% of capacity. They noted, um, the public school contact uh, noted that the high school projection drops to 94% with the completion of current bond work by 2020 through 2021. They've also mentioned that uh, through the school system right now, uh, they came and met with town council uh, several months ago to give an update. It mentioned that there is uh, currently a bubble uh, working its way through middle school. And uh, once that bubble moves through uh, currently, uh, uh, that will provide some relief. Additional residential development they mentioned contributes to high enrollments and the issues that result from it. County coordination, uh, water and sewer available, the applicant said, uh, but we know as staff they'll need final approval, which will come as we move through this process and on into site plan review. We'll have to have approval at site plan review uh, you know, for the project to move towards construction. Union County Public Works, uh, it was mentioned that they're doing modeling downstream. Uh, Union County Environmental Health, uh, the projects to be reviewed and site plan review with them for all existing structures, septic systems, or, and or wells. But uh, more uh, also in, importantly is the, uh, uh, there's two, two pools and two clubhouses as part of the development for the apartments. So pools are submitted uh, uh, by themselves also to Union County Environmental Health during site plan review um, after this process. Community meetings. Uh, the two meetings were held on June 24th. Uh, there were six people that came through to those meetings. Questions were answered by the applicant about the project. Um, those minutes were provided in your packets. Some of the comments include uh, you know, many were favorable for the location, especially being beside 74. Many also thought the hotel would be a good addition to the town. Concerns about enough parking with the development and with park events. A parking deck was mentioned. Conversation occurred about future housing needs and that the new hospital will be bringing uh, approximately 850 new jobs nearby. So recommendation. Uh, the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, it promotes the goals of the comprehensive plan. Uh, they're spelled out in more detail in the staff report, but they touch on quality of life, land use and housing, mobility and transportation, and economic development. It's a reasonable request. Uh, staff, rec staff recommends approval with conditions and uh, related to economic development. I want to uh, tag team here. Tim, I'd like to correct myself. I looked at the wrong uh, case. It is CZ2019-44044, uh, oh, the hub. I apologize. So just quickly, um, Good evening, board members. I would like, um, from a staff perspective, we just want to simply make the board aware of uh, the bigger picture plans um, as it relates to uptown and downtown Indian Trail and how this specific project fits into those plans. So um, you'll see here that um, uptown, downtown, the Infin Infinity Trail that's connecting the two and um, 
what staff has been working on is is basically between the downtown master plan, the comprehensive plan, and the uptown downtown initiatives. Um, all of those are combined in the new uh, draft unified development ordinance that is set to be adopted at the end of this year. And these plans identify high density within these areas and, and have for some time. So, let's see. Um, the first is the downtown initiatives. And um, this area is quickly becoming a sports complex um, with 10 different sports that are gonna be represented in the near future. Um, along with the hub project, there are also 80 um, townhouses proposed. Um, You'll see up here at the north area, the first floor um, of those ground floor will be commercial um, along Chestnut Parkway. And what that will do is begin to create the streetscape that you would expect to have in a downtown uh, core. The next, just quickly wanted to um, remind you if you weren't aware that the town recently received a $250,000 uh, grant from the NFL to construct a new turf field. Um, so we're excited about that addition and that will bring three additional sports um, to this complex. And town council recently approved a resolution for a light rail project um, that will have a dramatic effect on this area. There's also been a DOD federal grant in the amount of 900,000 for the light rail study that was approved by CATS. And the Metropolitan Transit Commission and the Charlotte Mayor have approved this project as well. Um, for, for projects this large, the key is ridership. And of course, we feel the, the increased density in this area as the plans have described will help with this ridership. Um, and just a little bit about the, what you see on the screen. Um, this red section is the ideal um, path and location for, for multiple reasons, but I won't dive in too deep on that for you. A little bit about uptown initiatives. Um, there is um, this 46 acre parcel proposed to have over 100,000 square feet of class A office over to the west side, uh, eight, 65 townhomes in the middle and then over to the east, 252 apartment units and a pickleball court in the middle. So that's a little bit about what's going on uptown. There's also a proposal for an amphitheater that of course um, is pending the project being funded, but that is proposed in uptown. And then this is just to, to recap and explain all of the funding transportation projects within the town. Uh, the increased density is proposed to be concentrated in the core, and we, of course, are, are with the, the trails and the streetscapes of what you would see in downtown is more pedestrian friendly. So we're trying to locate the density in an area that will have less impact on the transportation system. Um, thank you for your time, and I'll turn it back over to Mr. Jones for a few conditions to discuss before we turn it over to the development team. Thank you. So far, and as this moves through the process through planning board and on to town council, uh, this will be an evolving uh, list of conditions to go with the final resolution. But to begin with, we've started with, uh, with, with what we see uh, from what we have right now. Uh, staff, uh, one condition would just be a a blanket thing to cover things still coming in. So staff to confirm that Union County, Public Works, Environmental Health, Sheriff's Office, and Fire Marshal to that they have made comments and they are addressed. Next, uh, development to go below the minimum lot area per unit, 3,350 square feet for the apartments. Applicant to provide apartment bedroom information for parking calculation and address staff comments. <coughs> and I will switch over presentation.
Excuse me, Mackenzie, uh, Ms. Moser. Um, we're going to do public comments first before the um, presentation. My apologies. At this time, I'd like to open up for public comment. Um, again, you have three minutes. You can't uh, give your three minutes to anybody else. We have a light system here. After you state your name and your address, the green light will come on. Uh, when you have 30 seconds left, the yellow light will come on. And then when your three minutes is up, the uh, red light will come on. So I'd like to call uh, our first uh, public comment, Larry Helms. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and board members. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, I thought it was really neat. One of our employees said he would very well hope that we would get a hotel. He was tired of his in-laws coming to spend in the weekend, <laughs> and he couldn't put them in a hotel. So that's a good positive remark for the hotel. You know, I want to reflect about 18 years ago, you know, the big deal here in Indian Trail was to put the uh, sidewalk from 74 to 74, and that was the big expenditure. I'm amazed at what you folks do. I'm amazed at the quality of what you do in changing our community for a better community. It's one that's sought after and seen it, you know, in the whole area. You know, the ballpark that you put in in Crooked Creek, what you're doing to, with downtown, I'm a, I'm really proud to be a, a, a person that for, that's been a history here at Indian Trail, and I commend you on what you do. It's a, it's a great thing you're doing, and you're doing it with quality, and that's what I wanted to share. I think it is a great time to put a hotel on this end, especially with the hospital coming in the area, and that'll be a great addition to that. But again, thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted, sometimes you don't get many good comments, but I got some good comments for you, and I just wanted to recognize you and thank you for what you do. So thank you, sir, for letting me speak. Thank you for your comments. Now, uh, next would be Amanda Falkenberry. Looking at this, the hotel, love it. Absolutely wonderful. Mr. Mosier. Um, love it placement, like it looks. The question and concern I have is the apartment complex. It's a large number of apartments, and it's potentially a lot of traffic on that road. Line of sight coming out onto Chestnut, we have parallel parking, so you have line of sight issues parking either within the complex and within our park when we have events that are up. Possibility of the people using Shady Bluff, you know, the little narrow road mm -hmm. over here. So I do have concerns about that. What I would think would work better is a convention center with maybe a small stage for performing arts. Or better yet, the family fun center that they've been talking about at Sun Valley, why not put it over here? Perfect. You've been talking about your ballparks. We've got a pool going in. That would be, I think, in my opinion, the better fit. You can go to the hotel. They can go to Carolina Courts. The kids can go over, ball, play the video games, the bumper cars. So I would think that area would be better used for both of those. Thank you. At, time, at this time, we uh, close public comments. And at this time, uh, we'll have the applicant report to the board. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for allowing us the time to present tonight. My name is Mackenzie Moser with the Moser Group, and I'm excited to share with you about the hub at Downtown Indian Trail. We're also excited to partner with the town and their vision on what you just heard, so thank you for explaining all of those details. The hub at Downtown Indian Trail is a reaction to the Downtown and Uptown Indian Trail Master Plan from the town. 
I believe the master plan was a good decision from the town, and I'm excited to share with you the mixed-use development that so will support the future professionals, entrepreneurs, millennials, and future high-profile pro project of the light rail. This will bring a brand new product to the town of Indian Trail and will begin the cleanup of independence. Indian Trail has not seen a project like this and it looks ahead to the future of this town. So let's take a look. This is the subject site. As discussed, it was 28.284 acres and touches Highway 74, Chestnut Parkway. North Indian Trail Road and Nelson Lemon Drive. This community will have an energetic lifestyle. It will be a place for millennials. It keeps young ones at home and helps businesses thrive. A true live, work, play community. The project includes a hotel, 100 to 110 rooms, two phases of multifamily development encompassing 650 units of dense or urban style apartments that will be three to four stories. It offers the dense walkable front door of, for the town of Indian Trail and creates that live work play environment adjacent to the town's new town hall, the Carolina Courts Sports Complex, the Union Aquatic Center, the Veterans Memorial Garden, and many other future developments in the area, including the proposed artificial turf field that was discussed. Um, this creates the true downtown with the density and the mix of uses. So this, plan, this slide shows the site plan. It was designed by Land Design and Land Design is the consultant who's here tonight and can also answer any questions regarding the site plan. So starting at the point at one o'clock um, on the site plan, this allows for a grand sense of arrival along 74 and this will begin the cleanup of Highway 74. It will begin to change the culture of independence. It will, this will be the gateway of Indian Trail. So moving to the next bubble, um, the location for the hotel allows for excellent visibility along 74. The hotel will be a part of phase one along with the 350 apartments. The apartments will have a resort-style swimming pool and amenity club clubhouse. Lastly, the connectivity to Nelson Lemon Drive. This will be converted to two-way traffic with 60-degree on-street parking provided by the developer. This will be an off-site improvement and amenity for the town's benefit that includes 87 sp spaces when the park is full or Carolina courts, they can utilize these spaces. So we have maximized the development potential while preserving the wetlands to use as an amenity to the project with amazing landscaping and walking trails, as you see. So moving on for the hotel development, um, the hotel, which is, again, a part of phase one, will serve not only the town of Indian Trail, but all the sports tournaments, the sports facilities, Carolina courts, the businesses in the surrounding area, and allows all to stay within the downtown area. The hotel will be four to five story, a modern hotel brand with a class A amenities package, the pool, coffee bar, fitness center, tech forward, the lounge area, Class A, top of the line um, hotel. And we'll see some renderings, examples on the next slide. As you can see, these are Class A brands. Um, the hotel on the site will be very comparable to what is pictured. So moving on with the multifamily, we've partnered with Graystar. They're the global leader in rental housing, and we partnered with them to obtain their expertise on a Class A project for the hub. 
They're also in attendance tonight and will be available for any questions regarding the multifamily portion of the project. The multifamily, as stated, will be in two phases. The first phase is 350 units of rental product, the clubhouse and amenities. And the second phase is 300 units of rental project with an additional clubhouse and amenities. All are three and four story flat roof urban style products that will add to the ambiance of the downtown. And with the class A amenities package of the multifamily, you'll see the resort style um, pool, the coffee bar fitness center, the fire pit and outdoor grilling area, the lounge <laughs> area and the dog park, which we'll see examples of this in the next few slides. The interiors, you're gonna see granite countertops, LVT flooring, designer light fixtures and high-end appliances. So these images are actual renderings of Gray Star products. And these are example products that we are planning for this development. This is the clubhouse. These are examples of the amenities of actual Gray Star products. And again, the outdoor pool. And the exterior, you see this is a class A look with class A materials, flat roofs to create the urban style, dense, the walkable front door community. And the interior with the high end appliances, the granite countertops, looks beautiful. Then the preliminary unit mix and rents, um, as you can see the average rents for the one, two, and three bedroom apartments. And these are very competitive rents for the market. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share with you about the hub at Downtown Indian Trail. And we would love to answer any questions. We hope to get your support for this project that goes along with the town's vision for the future of Indian Trail. Thank you. At this time, I'll open up the um, questions to the, to the staff and to the board members. Mr. Chairman, I'll start it off, if, if you would. Um, my concern is the, um, I think we're showing 650 apartments and you're having one parking space per unit. Is that correct? Yes. That's what I'm reading here. Mark will answer. Uh, good evening. My name is Mark. I'm, I'm with Land Design. I am the uh, site designer for the project, and with 650 units, we're showing uh, 842 spaces, so the ratio is closer, closer to 1.3 spaces per unit. Well, I, I had the liberty to call the town of, uh, the little small town of Monroe, and their, their requirements is uh, one per bedroom per st plus one per unit, so that's two per apartment. And if you've got a three-bedroom apartment, you've got actually four parking spaces. And, and I, I'm, I'm just concerned about having 650 families here in this, in this development, in this cluster here, and only having a limited number of parking spaces. And the next thing I have, um, uh, my question is um, security. Um, you got 650 families right here in a, in a small cluster. What are you, do you have any in-house security plan? Sure. So, good evening, y'all. I'm, I'm Josh Glover with Graystar. Like Kenzie mentioned, we're working on the apartment. So, just to address the parking question first, so we manage a lot of a lot of communities kind of throughout the Charlotte metro area, um, about 15,000 units, and it's something we're very sensitive to as well, right? I mean, we don't want to lease to folks who can't find a parking spot because then they won't re-sign a lease. Um, so, what we did is we went out and we studied comparable communities. We looked at an asset we manage in Matthews and an asset we manage over by Waverly um, and then one we manage in Southwest Charlotte and took a number of different counts at various times during the day. Took some in the morning, took some in the evenings. And where that shakes out is if you kind of look at comparable communities, utilization rates are about 0.75 per bed um, and that's across the board. So that, that's about 1.2 spaces per unit. So the way we've designed our site is actually slightly greater than that if you look at actual utilization rates in the market. 
But to Tim's earlier point, I know that's something staff's very focused on as well. We're, we're talking to him on a regular basis, and so it, it's an ongoing point of conversation. Um, well, I mean, well, just about every, every person in this room, uh, if we have a family, there's, there's two vehicles. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but there's at least two vehicles. Yeah. And if you got any children or whatever, the then the, or guests, I mean, it's even more. So my big concern is you have people parking everywhere else. I mean, what I'm reading here, it says one pace, space per apartment and then plus 87 additional spaces which is only 13%. So only 13% of those apartment dwellers are gonna be able to get that extra space. So, I mean, that, that is my main concern, so. Um, yeah. I have a question. Um, in the long-term plan, I know we mentioned the light rail coming, and I mean, the way that I'm seeing this is we're not necessarily trying to attract families to this, to this apartment complex. We're more focusing on um, maybe the people that are working at the new hospital in Stallings, uh, the millennials that maybe don't want to have a car, you know, I mean. I, I think that's exactly right. Um, you know, I mean, we're obviously, we won't discriminate if anybody wants to live right. with us, and we do think there will be families there. I mean, you all saw that in the school impact study. But I think you're exactly right. The target audience is, is a younger demographic. And that 87 extra parking spots, where is that in relation to the apartments? And is that included in your parking spot number that you just quoted? That's, that's not included in our parking counts. That's along, so Lemon Drive's currently a one-way street. Mm -hmm. We're going to convert it to two-way and then add, you can see it kind of there in Plan Southwest, there at the edge of the apartments. Where you're putting in the two-way there at Lemon, Lemon Drive? That's correct. Yes, ma'am. And there's the 87 parking spots in that? That's, that's 87 spaces, and those are exclusive of the counts I just said. Okay, and so these long buildings that I'm looking at, right beyond uh, that road, are those the apartments? Or where are the townhomes versus the apartments here? There's no townhomes proposed in this project. I know um, Brandy gave an overview, and there's townhomes contemplated as part of the larger downtown plan. Okay. But as it relates to just this project, this is strictly apartment apartments. family. Okay. Um, so yes, the, the buildings you referenced are the apartments. And then the hotel is the long stretch. Uh, in right the, there. In the, in yes, the exactly. Here. And how, how many parking spots does the hotel have? Do you know? Uh, the hotel site has 121 spaces. And that's without uh, 110 rooms? Uh, 105 to 110, yes. Okay. I have some questions. Um, <laughs> on some of the uh, uh, questions on the community meeting, one thing that doesn't really make sense is um, the question was asked about the price point. And then also in it, it said about 10% of the apartments are three bedroom, 45% of the apartments are two bedroom, and 55% are one-bedroom apartments, which adds up to be over 100%. That's what, 110%? But then when you did the school study, you, uh, you said that 55% um, would be one-bedroom, 40% two-bedroom, and 5% three-bedroom. Plus, you got down listed as a number of apartments as plus or minus 650. So you show 10% of three bedrooms and your answers on the community meeting, and then you come back and you do a school study based on 5%. And I would, I'd like to see a study done with 10% uh, three-bedroom apartments like your history has. Yeah, and those comments, I mean, I, I made those without the benefit of my actual counts in front of me, so I, those probably aren't accurate to the, to the number. Tim, do you have those unit counts I sent you earlier today? I believe it's 16 three-bedrooms that we've proposed for phase one um, and 15 for phase two. So it's, it's 31 over 650 units. So it's, it's just less than 5%. Is what that going to be in stone? Uh, and you're not going to come back and change that later on? I think we're stuck with that, right, Tim? Uh, that's your call. Yeah. It's your I mean, call. I, I'll, I'll commit to you. That, those, those are our counts. I mean, that's what's in that plan. And so I'm on the record there. Uh, the other thing that bothers me is, I mean, we all know the, the uh, water capacity and the sewer capacity of the county, and we don't have an approval yet on the, from the county on that. Uh, the sheriff's department, that's pending. The fire marshal, that's pending. I'd rather see this complete before we, uh, particularly with the county public works. So that's just kind of lethal. How can we, how can we recommend something without those things uh, completed? I would just like to say, though, that I think it's a fabulous project, but I agree that, um, you know, for the future of Indian Trail, this is exactly, you know, this is what staff recommends, and it looks wonderful. I love the location. I love the hotel, um, the apartments. 
it, it will reach an audience that we haven't been able to reach up until now. So I, I see the value here. However, I think until we have all of our ducks in a row, I mean, this is like a, this is a, a big project for the town of Indian Trail, you know, and if you're going to be the grandfather here and, and show everybody how to do it and how to do it right, then I'd like to see us do it right from the beginning, meaning right now. So I don't want you to misunderstand when I do this, but I'd like to make a, mo a motion that we delay approval um, on this until we have more details. Uh, it's, it's a great project, but I'd like to make a motion that we delay this until we have more concrete numbers. We have a motion to delay for more information. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. And it's unanimous. And I just have one question. Have <laughs> um, it appears that you're going to have a terrace. Sorry, do what? Are you going to have a terrace on these apartments? With no. these apartments? With balconies? Yes. Balconies. yes mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and since, you know, you have families with young children, is there going to be any sort of safety measure where a, a young one can't fall over and kill themselves? Yes, yeah, so building code stipulates appropriate height on balcony railings, and then building code also stipulates the gap off the ground. You can't be any greater than, I believe it's two inches off the ground, and you have to be 48 inches in height. And so that's, that's your safety mechanism. And that's, you know, that's compliant with every building code in the country. Not really. Mm -hmm. What additional information do you need? Because we do have the letter of approval from Union County Public Works that there is availability on water and sewer, and we've submitted everything that's required at this point. We've gone and met with um, the buyer, mm -hmm. and so specifically, what additional information are you requiring? Well, it's not complete yet, it, and we'd like yes. to. We'd, yes, we we'd would like, like to see to it review all complete. Them. And we're not saying that we're against this project. We just want we want the presentation completed. Yes. Well, how about the draft conditions? What do we what, what do we? Need to stand at the mic if you yeah, you need to stand at the microphone if you're going to address the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just to reiterate what Dennis said, a lot of that information won't necessarily be complete until we've received planning board approval, received council approval, and then gone out and done you know full set of plan development, which is significant. So the fire department won't give any kind of a um, ruling on this. The sheriff's fire department, department won't. Sheriff Dude, department. Does, yeah. I mean, I, I need to see that. I think we have it. As we part know. of our recent middle package, we had to um, provide turning a turning movement exhibit, which was included. I believe it's the eighth sheet in the package. We've got, like I said, the letters from Union County that Public Works that identifies that we've got the 16-inch water line and the 8-inch uh, sanitary sewer line running through the middle of the project. So we're, you know, we've got the availability. So what, what about the Union County, I'm sorry, what, what about the Union County Sheriff's Department? That on my paperwork says pending. What are we waiting on there? Because I know in the past a big issue with hotels and Indian Trail is the, the possibility of crime that it brings. While I agree this is very high-end, um, my, that's my concern when I was reviewing my packet is on this page all of these items that are pending mm -hmm. so and I look at the project that we're reviewing later and all of these things are in place so I understand what you're saying that they're pending until we can move the ball forward so to speak but I would be curious what the Union County Sheriff has to offer on this so on this so on this project here in particular we'll just use this for an example Mr. Moser's writing that I'm looking at a picture from way up in the air right there. I can't do any type of, you know, viewpoint to look at it for safety concerns or for criminal concerns or anything else. Traffic flow, parking, because y'all hear, you guys hear from us a lot on things like parking and driveway lengths on residential neighborhoods and stuff, but they're way early in the concept on this, where we're at now on this stage for us to even weigh in on. You know, I, I, I can weigh in from your standpoint and say, it's got a hotel and there's a lot of people around here that need a hotel and want a hotel for their family and it's probably going to be meeting the need of a population or part of our population but from the sheriff's office and probably from the fire and most other places we can't give you a we can't give the town any type of analysis on it or make any recommendations to them 
for, hey, we need to move some shrubs or, hey, how about move these trees over here, you know, to look at it from a, what we call a septet, a crime prevention through environmental design aspect. We can't give any kind of recommendations at this level here. Okay. So, so to that point, um, you know, and I, I, not just with the fire department and, or at least I, that's what I think it was, but DOT has no comment. Um, we have nothing back from DOT that I, mean, I can see. That's, I understand. And again, I want to reiterate what they're saying. I, I think it's a great plan. I, I'm not saying I'm against it, but no one has a comment. And I, and so what happens if we say, yeah, go ahead. And then the comments are, oh, we, we can't do that. I mean, so that's kind of from my perspective, which is the opposite of what you guys are saying. So we just, uh, like we voted, we need more information. That's part of your basic engineering. I'm familiar with development. Let me just let me just interject. I think some of the issues the board is having is more of a technical standpoint where you've you've got town experts such as stormwater, for example. Um, you don't design and do all the calculations for stormwater and spend all the money up front without going through this process. Same thing for water. Now, if they hadn't confirmed with the county that they had water and sewer, they probably shouldn't be at this at this point, right. but they've confirmed that there's water and sewer access and you have to them the site. Here yes, with us? yes, right. yes. Yeah. So a lot of these comments that the boards having issues with are are where your your town employees, your county employees would review those from a technical aspect during the site plan review, and not we're not at that stage yet. Still got some issues here. Um, I want to see a DOT traffic study. It was submitted as part of this and rezoning petition. It's what now? It was submitted as part of this re rezoning petition, the okay. TIA. Do we have that here? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, then if we have, if we, uh, if we have it, why does it say no yeah, comment? There's on nothing here showing us anything. That, from our perspective, we're seeing no comment, no comment, well, no comment. Well, several of the things that you see in no comment, mm -hmm. I mean, that was something that was in the kind of the blurb that was used before for things that will come later in the process okay. when more details fleshed out, like towards site plan review. Uh, so, uh, Tim, I think we'd be more comfortable if they get that information to us and, and we postpone it until next month. This is a yeah. massive project in Indian Trail, mm -hmm. and it's yep. not a small little, um, it's not a small little apartment. The TIA, the TIA has been, been done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Moser, Ms. Our, we voted, and that stands. And so please give us some information uh, next month. Let us mm -hmm. get that information yes. so we can feel more comfortable with it. Well, all and, of our and projects. And we may come back with a different I think I think the board needs to be clear on what information, and you need you need to understand that it's no. it's something that has to be in the code that that we're requiring of them, and they've met those requirements. So. The Unified Development Ordinance does have a clause in there that planning board should hear things in a timely manner. So I want to make sure right. that I protect mm -hmm. you as the board that you're not holding up development unnecessarily for for items that they would not be able to provide to you at this time. Well, here yeah. again for the we have no, our homework we, here. Yeah, we don't have yeah, the we information get, we're asking for right now. For years, we've gotten our projects. Can, can I, with information. Can I speak for a second? I, I think the the anxiety that Mackenzie's feeling is not necessarily for us. It's for the Lemon family. And Steve, would you like to come up and we're, we're on a timeline with the Lemon family that's pretty critical and um, and in getting this across the finish line. That's a very expensive timeline. And and you know we've met everything that the staff has asked us to meet we've turned in everything that you're asking for um, mm -hmm. if you can just provide us with what it is you're asking for um, i think it's included in your package we'll be glad to 
you know, answer any That's questions. why we won't wait until next month and get that information so we can look at it. And us feel more comfortable at what this project's gonna to do to the town and to the citizens. One of the things that we are responsible for is uh, protecting the citizens and the current way of life that they have here. And if um, this thing is, we want to see this stuff before we okay it. And we don't, we don't have it here. Yeah, yeah, we're not yeah. trying to submit a half-baked smoke back. Right? We, we right. submitted everything, correct? Important. I think our ask to you would be, can you articulate specifically? Because we want to see the traffic study. We want to see the school study itself because I'm not sure. I mean, you're, we have your word right now, but we don't have anything in writing that you're only going to you do 10%. Your staff's word. You have your staff's word. That. You just got through saying that your your average apartments have 10% three bedrooms, and your study did 5%. So we want something. You want to give us something back in writing that's going to be 5%? 5% three bedrooms. Yeah, well, put it in writing. Yeah, the, the school impact study. All, all they want to do is just see it. That's it. That's yeah. it. I mean, don't don't, right don't there, calm down. Here. All you want to do is just see it. That's it. <laughs> all you want to do, Mackenzie, calm down. It's okay. No, it's just. Yeah. 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 But I'm saying come back in a month. They get, just want to see it. That's all. So we can review it and we can make what we feel is a good decision. But the problem okay? is we're, we're just asking we are all for, for the project. Trust me. We just want to see it before but we delaying vote. Delaying it all. 30 days is a critical issue for everyone's timeline, uh, including the, the family. So mm -hmm. if you have it, can you show it to them? So if you'll... you'll I mean, we've already voted. We can go back to Tim's PowerPoint, but if you voted. see in his PowerPoint, mm -hmm. he he actually summarized all of the, the traffic impact analysis as well as the school analysis. I'll go back and say this is such a massive project here in Indian Trail. We're not saying we're going to turn it down. We're saying that we want to see the information. There's been many times that stuff's been presented and has been has gone a different way and done uh, done different. I've seen it. We've so, got too much building in Indian Trail already. Not to our satisfaction. And again, I think you have to be very specific on things that they have not submitted. Traffic and schools is not one of them. I'm trying to protect you as the board right. from holding up development unnecessarily. Well, we're we're trying to protect the city and the the, um, the residents here. So so let's let's spell that out for them, please. Okay, uh, we want to sit and we want to look at the in detail the traffic study. We want to look at the. Um, the school study, and we want to see the uh, utility study. Okay, we'd like to ask for a recess so we can provide that information to you. Okay. What can I ask a question? What is the deadline for you guys? Because we don't want to feel rushed neither, but we don't want to mess you guys up as well. What is your deadline? You said you had a deadline, so what is it? We do. Uh, I mean, Three yeah. days changes our entire timeline. Exactly. My, my name is Steve Rich. I'm the broker representing the Lemon family. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to sell this property for a long time. Mm -hmm. And Dennis and, and the Moser Group were selected because they could move things along, which was critical to the whole process. So on behalf of the Lemon family, you know, they don't want to see delays. They, they're ready to move. And, and we feel like Dennis and, and Mackenzie and their whole team have done a remarkable job of moving this project to this point. Mm -hmm. And when I'm there just listening, you know, with the delay, my, my question like has been asked, what are the reasons for the delay? And if the, if the information has been provided, then I think it should be shared with you. You should be able to look at it instead of delaying something that you have on hand. Well, my point is all developers know this is a cost of doing business. We don't operate on your timeline. Yeah. We operate on the board's timeline and what's good for the town. And that's why we want some time to take a look at the studies and go over it. And we may come back next month and say, okay, we feel good about it. But with this massive of a project, we want, we want to look at it. But, but are you sure that the information you're requesting is not they already have? You know, you it's going to it? take us a little bit of time to look at it. We can't sit here tonight yeah. with the, these studies that have come back and, and make any kind of a decision of whether we feel good about it or not by the, for this town. This is a massive project. It's going to affect everybody in this town. Hopefully it'll be positive, like we think that the downtown project will be positive. But we want a little extra time to take a look at some of these specifics. And, you know, I just, I'm reading on one of the last pages here, and we really do, we, I think that we all like this project. But the information that we have in front of us, regardless of what was turned in with your package, what I see is staff recommends approval of this with the following conditions. And this is where my concern 
slide when I first reviewed the package today was the following conditions part where staff to confirm that Union County Public, Public Works, Environment or Health, Sheriff's Office, and Fire Marshal have made comments and are addressed and another comment. But, and I understand that's up to our staff and you guys have done very well at putting together your project and I, and I commend you for what you're trying to do here. But as Chairman Gay said, because of the way, the information that, that we have right here, we need to, we need to see, and, and it's not from you, I, it needs to be from staff, more uh, like to confirm that Union County Public Works, Environmental Health, Sheriff's Office, and Fire Marshal have made comments, and, you know, I mean, what does that entail from staff? It went to, you know, does the tail wag the dog or does the dog wag the tail? The developers don't wag the dog. We want to see this information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that's very reasonable, but I think our frustration is stemming from the fact that you know, we, we did submit it, right? I'm sure you see so. a lot of frustrations in your business. I've got friends that are in it, and they're, they I get do. frustrated. Frustration comes so with the territory, no we doubt. Want to, we want some time to look at this information and come up with a good decision for the town. Yeah, I mean, did you want to mention? Okay, moving right along. I think we've had a vote, so thank you, and yeah. we'll get the information, and we'll make a decision on it. Thank you. Okay, our next project is CZ two zero one nine zero zero five zero and Would you like to make that presentation? Um, want to make, come on, again. Um, want to mention one thing and then I'll, I'll drop it after that, but it's, right. it's just a piece of advice if, if you want it. Uh, while you're in session, you, an option that you have is to delay a uh, certain thing to another date, which could be instead of waiting 30 days, right. uh, we could wait like half that time and set it for another uh, set another day. Well, let us see what kind of volume we've got to look through. I mean, it's hard for us to sit here today without seeing any of it. We, we can't, we can't schedule that meeting days. after we close. Once uh -huh. you adjourn, okay. you can't set well, a special I think we're better meeting. off then just to wait a month. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, Chairman, I'm, I'm fine with, wait, with meeting beforehand if we needed to talk. We just don't know. We've got to see what volume we, gotta, we need to look at. Mm -hmm. And so if they're going to tie us down to it right now, then we can't be that tied down to it. Well, I'm it's not just saying do it right now. I'm not saying I'm not looking at no paperwork right well, now. They're saying I'm that saying we, that I'm, saying I'm willing to wait to yeah. to be, to cut the time in half. I'm willing to meet yeah, beforehand. I saw. I'm and just saying that. So that we'd have to come up with that meeting today. Yes. We can't come back after we look at the the uh, information and say, okay, we can go through this in five days and have a special meeting. Um, we can't. We don't. We've not seen the volume of information we have to look at. So. Let's just leave it at a month. I just thank you. Just information right. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're on CZ uh, 20190050 Faith Church Road. If you'd like to make that presentation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, this is for, as you mentioned, Faith Church Road Light Industrial Development, CZ 2019-0050, conditional zoning. It's a rezone approximately 6.33 acres. Current zoning is Regional Business District. Proposed zoning is conditional zoning Light Industrial District. The applicant is Faith Commercial Partners, LLC. The intent is a light industrial development with four buildings. Here's the concept plan. There's a uh, Faith Church Road that fronts the property. Uh, they're proposing uh, parking uh, for regular vehicles in the front. Uh, and uh, for areas where they have uh, the need for their loading, uh, loading dock areas, <clears throat> excuse me, um, 
That will be in the rear. Here's the existing site. It's an Indian Trail Business Park in this location. And then Faith Church Road site is in this location. There's an existing residential area across the street. Here's a couple of some photos going up and down Faith Church Road. It's already mostly a cleared site. This is a photo uh, up above on the left, looking north along Faith Church Road at the intersection with Highwood Drive with the property on the left. Here's an aerial map showing that same, same area with the industrial park behind it, residential across the street. Here's the existing land use map. There's light industrial that's already uh, to the rear, <clears throat> excuse me, to the rear of the property. Uh, so once it's rezoned light industrial, it'll match that property. The future land use map, the little sliver of the property is right in this area. And it was already uh, drawn in as part of uh, the industrial park. In the, future land, in the future land use map. There's a traffic in, impact analysis, mitigation uh, suggestions. They'll be reviewed by the town. Uh, it's a town road, Faith Church Road, uh, in that segment that's in front of the property. Uh, so the town will be reviewing this and uh, locking in those revisions uh, to what needs to be made. County Coordination, Union County Public Works, Fire Marshal and Sheriff's Office. Those items will be finalized during site plan review. Union County Environmental Health, same items, existing structures, septic systems and wells is what they look to show up on the site plans uh, for those site plan review. Community meetings. Uh, the two meetings were held, four people attended. Questions um, and answers were in the packet, but uh, some of the comments included uh, as a suggestion for more landscape to cover the front and back of the buildings so there is a natural buffer. Uh, they said it was good to hear, uh, good to hear, oh, good to hear that the trucks were parking in the rear of the buildings instead of uh, that they the loading areas would be facing the residents. Uh, there was a concern about the noise from garbage trucks emptying trash containers. Uh, they said they already hear this noise from the industrial park anyway. Uh, excited to see the empty lot going to be uh, finally developed. Recommendation request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. It promotes the goals of the comprehensive plan for an e economic development. It's a reasonable request. Staff recommends approval with some conditions. <clears throat> Draft conditions, it's the standard blurb I have uh, listed before with items that uh, we'll see that are addressed. All vehicle circulation, parking, and loading areas will be asphalt or concrete surface. Right now there's, they're proposing that it's uh, uh, to be stone gravel. Uh, but staff is proposing this condition for paving and asphalt as it lists in the UDO for those areas. Curb and gutter. Thanks. Uh, curb and gutter by, yeah, whatever requirements uh, are, are required for that, that area. Do we have any estimates of how many people will be working in that area? It's not, not going to be that I'd, many, is it? I, I know he's making a presentation. If um, it's, it's okay that... Uh, Huh? What was that? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer all those questions. 
Okay. 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 Uh, so, do you want me to go ahead and cue that up, or, or just wait for questions? We, well, we got a public comment before we. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay, are we ready for public comment? Yeah. All righty. Um, we're going to have on CZ two zero one nine dash zero zero five zero Faith Church Road, uh, Mr. Jim Dupont. Please come up, state your name, your address. You have three minutes. When the green light comes on, you can start. When the yellow light comes on, you have 30 seconds. When the red light comes on, then you have to stop. Thank you. Green light. <laughs> Jim DuPont out of 3308 Creek Trail Roads, Indian Trail. Uh, I'm in Trailwick. I've lived there for about 11 years. Very happy to be there. Uh, kind of a little bit of concern in reference to the new map, in reference to the new location, and the uh, the way the exits are set up for the new development. Basically, hardwood is our only exit out of the development. We have one way in, one way out, and they're going to have a new exit out of the new development, and it's going to basically bump right into Treywick or har or hardwood. Is there any way they can move that up to between the uh, 1,200 and the 2,400 square foot new development area so we're not running directly into traffic, basically trying to get out of our neighborhood? And the other issue is how is it going to affect our, our property value? You know, that's a key issue for us. You know, we've been there, I've been there 11 years, you know, I don't want to see my property value go down because having an industrial area that close to my neighborhood. That's an obvious concern to us. So um, it's a great neighborhood. Been there, love it, and uh, want to keep it up. And that's a concern that anybody would have in a, in a nice little neighborhood like that. So I'm not going to take up my three minutes, but that is a concern. And I'm surprised there's not more people from Treywick here. Uh, I'll end with that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Okay, can we have our presentation? Um, can I address some of the sure. comments first? Sure, for you too. Uh -huh. yeah, we um, want to protect our residents and that will, their neighborhoods. And we'll see if that works. Um, hello, I'm Matthew Kirchner. I'm with Eagle Engineering Consultants. I have an owner and representative here, too, as well, if you have any questions. Um, the big part on this one is we can already have office buildings by right here. So the, the conditional re, or rezoning that we're asking for is just so that we can allow warehouses and stuff in the back so it allows a little bit more, which would then reduce the amount of people who are actually out here. Most of those office buildings are going to be storage, minus a couple office buildings in the front. It is a flex space, so it could by right be all offices um, so what this development it is, is it's taking an empty lot that's been stranded no one's taken care of and developing out to something nice so you'll have a whole brick frontage instead of seeing the side from technology drive where they're not finished you're gonna have a completely upscale front on the front and the storage and stuff will be in the back can you explain what type of businesses are going to be there it, it's a it's a flex based development so there's it's built to to see. So what, whoever wants to buy it will build a, a shell for it and then they'll, they'll buy out the units or at least out the units. At this time, we won't know who it is. Yeah, it could be anything from a, uh, you know, a mediation company to a insurance or just whatever demand really they're looking for. I mean, the, the, the space is also divisible, you know, down to by about three or 4,000 feet. So it gives us a lot of range uh, on that. Yeah. So it could be multiple businesses in there Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it could be split up to any units to uh, have a small office and little stores in the back or one whole building, however the, the use ends up being. I mean, so basically a 1,200 square foot could be broken down to 1,000 square foot. Uh, but three, four is probably the lowest we'll go, just as what the market wants. But, okay. but you think similar to something like outside of a, the outside of Old Hickory, some of those buildings that are, you know, kind of a blend between, you know, a, traditional warehouse space and then also the type of person that may want some visibility um, so um, you know over there there's you know there's a, the speech style and there's, um, 
Will there be any kind of landscaping or berm yeah. or whatever to protect? We'd like yeah, to see the, that. Over, the whole front of it is a, is a landscape buffer mm -hmm. um, that we have, and I think let me switch to the. And that, what is the content of your of your landscape buffer? Uh, it's a twenty foot landscape buffer that's on the front of it, and it'll meet the, the staffs or mm -hmm. your, any trellis audience for the, the landscape buffer. Is there a berm? Trees. We we can berm it. We're actually going to have extra topsoil, so if we want to berm it, that's not a not an issue on our side. Right. Um, it, it's, again, it's the landscape buffer is there for landscape, so we'll have trees and bushes in there. We'll have topsoil on the site that we can burn the front of that if that's um, <laughs> help. But I mean, you're, you're getting the pretty side of the building's technology drives, getting the, the back side of it. Uh, getting the business side right? Yeah. Yeah, and never just from your valuation concern, I, that trade, uh, I'm an appraiser, so um, yeah, I, I don't think you're going to have it. If anything, you're going to add workforce here, which will push you know, the demand for housing up. So that so if you, if you use the back, you're going to get the back side of all the buildings because we're going to face towards the street they're coming in. So then you would see the back of all the buildings, all the storage and everything else. Everybody wants the front of the main street, so you guys get the pretty side of the brick. Why can't they use the back side there? We don't own that. It, the, the, the property line is where the property is. The yeah, that's not there. It's not a public street. That's part of the business there. part there, so we would be able to get that. I see a circle right there to connect to. If we own that property or the town or is this is private property? There. Yeah, our property line is right, right there, that green, this dark green. Yeah, right. So right here is our, I put a green oh, okay. up. So that, that's our end of our property there. Because yeah. it would actually be easier for deliveries if we could come to the back. But. Okay. At this point, uh, we got to close public comments, but um, uh, go ahead with your your presentation. Yeah, and, and we, we want to be fair and we really want to protect the people in the town and their investment in their homes and so we want you to ask questions so yeah okay go ahead thank you uh planning board for having us here and staff for your presentation this is the big church uh flex space development project um i'm going to kind of go over some of the same stuff that that tim did but give you a location where we're at your food line dollar tree uh technology driving light industrial this is uh the urgent care and uh general business we're right off of 74 uh project is about 6.3 acres um, it kind of stretches down. It, it kind of actually gets narrow all the way down to there, but the part developing it will be up at the top that's actually developable. Um, it is currently uh, zone RBD. Uh, LI is behind it. We have residential on this side. Um, we're requesting a, a conditional zoning LI. Um, big is on that. It's just adding a couple of uses so we can have some warehouses in the back instead of full offices. That's kind of what the market's dictating now. So we'll have offices usually towards the front and then be able to have some warehouse storage area in the back. Uh, same thing that you see on Technology Drive, as well as if you go to the um, Old Hickory Business Park, a little bit farther back, that same type of um, office building. Yeah, I'd like to bring out the point that this this is a totally different animal we're looking at now because uh, you already have light industrial there in the area. There's already been a fire study, a um, highway study, sheriff's department study. You're not going to have that many people in the place, and um, so it. Uh, it, it doesn't add a huge amount of volume, um, so I, I feel better actually, about. This rezoning actually will reduce it. Instead of having a full office space, where you have a whole bunch of people working here, you're mostly storage. Right. I uh, have it in the back, so this will actually reduce a lot of the the traffic that you're having on there. But right. We did already do a traffic study and then include that into the site plan, the improvements that I was asking for. So the the trucks will they be going? Just to make sure that. I got this straight. Uh, if they go to the back of the building to unload, mm -hmm. is that facing the other light industrial property? It's facing the other light industrial so property. You're, so there's nothing on front minus like regular cars that would park into the. So the a forklift or a, a truck would be blocked. Would be the sound the would be blocked by the property in the exactly. back. Exactly. Same yeah. thing we had a, on a community meeting, the, the, the dumpster pickup that's early in the morning. Uh -huh. This in technology drive, but this will actually really help buffer that. I mean, obviously, you got to pick up trash and. I can't really prevent people from getting the trash picked up, but this with the two-story building on there will actually kind of buffer it when they're picking up. Does that that sound barrier almost like what you see on highways when they put the big walls up? That will hopefully maybe shear a little bit of that sound for them. Right. Well, the main main concern I think, and you folks chime in is is just to uh, keep the sound down, keep the traffic as low as possible, and um, and protect the, the neighborhood. So. We'd like to see a berm. We'd like to see extra landscaping. If you could do that for us. Yeah, that, that, that's not a problem. The, we'll, we can put a berm on the front and add some extra landscaping. Mm -hmm. over the, the Samantha, you have a question? Yeah. 
Is this facility going to be manned 24 hours, seven days it, a week? It's going to be normal operating hours. The hours, if they have somebody that's there that wants 24 hours, but the light industrial is usually an eight to five job. They come okay. in, they mm -hmm. have a couple of people that are shipping in and out. Um, okay. But right now, there's no restrictions on the operation. Okay. A lot of it's UPS traffic, too, isn't it? A lot of it's UPS. Mm -hmm. FedEx, UPS. Up and Already. Great. Smaller but units. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, yeah. the idea with the breaking up. Is that this, the product we have in, in the market right now is really yeah. obsolete in the right. 90s. Um, I think there's, this is, there's a need for this product type. Yeah. Well, Indian Trail needs yeah, the jobs. Yeah, we, yeah, we're flooded yeah, with yeah, subdivisions yeah, and people, people and, line, you know. yeah. right, our traffic's horrendous going to Charlotte for jobs. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about security, you know. And, and so that, that will be, and it could be fenced, but that will be depending on the, the end user, whether they feel like they need to have it fenced in. But, I mean, the, obviously the front of the building is... They always have lights at, at, at night to, okay. to kind of keep them up. And so you, instead of going empty lot that anybody can get into and people coming across mm -hmm. that they're not supposed to be cut through, this will actually prevent and, and dress up that area quite nicely. Okay. Um, so the, the two big points that I want to make sure I have is what I'm requesting here on the conditional zoning is one is the, the LIU so that we can have some additional uses. The second is the, the rear area to be stone instead of asphalt. Uh, some of those reasons are is, is the, the flexibility of, of what we're putting there and the, the easier maintenance the stone is from asphalt. You can kind of mm -hmm. see down technology drive that is asphalt, which is being required mm -hmm. to prevent pet holes. It is horrible to, to drive on. It's expensive to maintain. And that's why it was in the condition it is now. Mm -hmm. This is at the rear of the site behind all the buildings. Everything on the front will be asphalt for cars. This is back in the area where most of the, the work will be done so that it can be easily maintained. And that's mm -hmm. why we're requesting the stone back there. Stormwater and everything else is treated the same way. Uh, there's no curbs required back there. It's just a different finished surface uh, that we're requesting back there just so that the end user can maintain their area easier. I mean, if you get a pot yeah. or something, it's a lot easier to get a truck of, of, of stone back there, fill it in, instead of trying to get a whole asphalt company in there to cut, patch, and, and repair. Right. And, and and there's there's the Some people call it ABC. Other people call it Russian, crush and run. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. What, how does the town feel about that? Um, it's in our code to uh, provide asphalt or concrete on all surfaces for businesses. Uh, not only dust, but we just feel it's a more stable surface uh, for trucks to utilize, especially large trucks. Uh, so it's yeah, the question is how many large trucks are going to go back there versus. But I understand the town's concern. And I understand the concern about asphalt because you get these hot summers like we have here. If you got somebody turning, it's going to tear that asphalt all to pieces. So concrete is probably the best option. Um, other than, but you know, in North Carolina, uh, crush and run or gravel or whatever is considered impervious. So you're going to pay stormwater fees it's on that no matter the what. Same way when we're doing stormwater runoff and everything, all that is the same. Mm -hmm. It's really the, st the maintenance and end user so that it can be easily maintained and, and taken care of. Um, again, I hate to bring up technology drive, but that's a great example of asphalt not being taken care of and it's horrible to drive on it. And th there's what they're saying, the staff is saying is that's what they want asphalt to do is prevent that. What I'm saying is the asphalt's not preventing that. If, if you look at the rest of technology drive in the rear parking lots, most of them are stone because it's easier to maintain, it's easier to store stuff off. If you have to flatten an area, you can kind of move stuff around as, as you need to. And it's crush run, it, it sets up uh, really firm so the, the dust and stuff is not there after the construction has been done. Yeah, crush and run is almost like concrete once it gets down and packed in. Um, so I'm assuming you wouldn't want concrete because of the cost? Uh, if we had a, to go to an option, we would do asphalt probably more than anything. Yeah. On the loading dock areas, even if we did stone in the back where they actually stop the trucks, we do concrete those ones alone because you got forklifts and stuff coming out. Um, but there's no guarantee that any of these will actually have loading docks on it. That all depends on the, the end user. Um, so if there's nothing in the back, it, it might be a grass area back there, but we want the, the ability to, to use the stone if that's mm -hmm. what the end user would like to have. Um, I mean, Tim, are you familiar with the other uh, facilities over there and what they, do they have crush and run gravel in the back? And what's your comment? Uh, any more comments on that you might can help us with? No, just uh, trying to hold the standard, uh, mm -hmm. the standard that's in the code, just trying to hold that e equally for everybody. Right. 
And so when did this, um, since we're all fairly new to the board, when did, when did it, uh, it switch to asphalt or concrete? Do you know? You, um, you're new too. I'm new too. So it's, it's, it's in the UDO that's currently active. I don't know what it says in the new UDO that's not approved. Uh, and, and I can show you from so, this plan, every one of these are all APC stone or, or not. There's probably maybe 10% that's actually asphalt. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if our end user wanted asphalt, that, that would be their choice to, to put it in. But it's, a, it's an easier area for a storage area in the back to, to maintain it. I mean, that's, so you're either going to have a tore up asphalt area. And if we ever do a new project, the town does have the right at that time to ask for upgrades as part of the, the upfits. So if the stone is not in great shape, uh, the town does have that right to, to ask for repairs on that site. Well, if one thing this town needs is light industrial jobs, we, we don't need any more people to speak of. We got tons of those. Um, we need jobs, good paying light industrial jobs. That's I, our- I absolutely agree. We think this will, will, will build out quick, um, at least will fast. I mean, the, the, the markets, there's not many lease spaces anymore in this this area to have that off front warehouse in the back, that the light industrial. So this this should move quick um, as we get through the approval process. Let me see if there was anything else. This is just a big zone kind of blown up um, of the area of, you know, this is a 20 foot buffer up there that we will uh, make add berm and everything to it. Um, this is the pond that we'll have for all impervious on site. Um, this is kind of what you see on the front. This is the Brookshire Business Park where you have the, the brick on the front. I'll have a 10 foot return. So everything that you see driving down uh, Bay Church Road will be the nice brick uh, front. Uh, this is just an overall the site. I added the, the TIA updates was the extra turn lanes. Um, this drive, everybody's going to require that drive to match up. I, I wish I could move it to a different spot. Um, for, for any traffic studies, they always make those those drives match up is, is really for safety coming in and out, um, left, conflicting left turns and, and such like that. That's where the town, and even if this was a DUT road, they would, they would force me to put it in that spot. Okay. Uh, I have some flexibility on the, the lower one, but there's nothing there that would, would cause any uh, influence there. And then the, the last slide is just the existing conditions of the, of the raw piece of land right now. But it, it, it wouldn't be heavy traffic anyway, so it's not like it would be a problem with the, okay. People coming in at 8, you know, 5 and yeah. during the day, whatever packages mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Okay. I guess a problem that I've got, me personally, is we've got, um, I mean, we got an ordinance and we've got requirements, and so going forward, the town wants this done, uh, wants it paved, and so if we make the exception here, we have to make the exception in other places. So... Um, that's our difficulty here of making an exception here in, in what we do down the road. And we just want to give you guys the, the best product we have. Right. And, and that, that's why we're asking for it. I mean, if it was, and asphalt was what we think was the best in the back, that's why we asphalt the front, it's just cars and stuff on it. They're not going to tear it up with the, the heavy use in the back where we need it. We just think that's the, the best product that we can have for the town. If you guys say you want to prove it with the condition of the asphalt, uh, I, I'm asking for it to, the, to really assist in that area. If you guys are 100% against the ABC stone, we'll asphalt the back. Um, it, again, if you just look at the technology drive and the way that asphalt is holding up, you'll see how much need repair it is that's not happening to it. So it was, it's either you get a nice clean area with the, the stone or you get an asphalt area that's gonna break up and break to pieces when the, the delivery trucks and stuff come. Well, like comment from the town. Yeah, I've I've spoken with other staff and and we want to uh, we want to stick with paved solid surfaces. Okay, okay. And that that includes uh, yeah. I come from an industrial background and I feel for you. I, I do. Um, but um, may I make one other comment? Um, the uh, we haven't had enough time for review on the the elevations, so there'll still be discussion about the the returns on the sides. Sometimes we've done 50 feet uh, on areas that, uh, you know, you're coming on a roadway and coming around. So they'll, they'll, we're still discussing the, the two elevations. The that I'm asking for are just the, the conditional LI and the, the stone in the back, the, the elevations and stuff we can 
week as, as needed. Super. I just wanted to make that. So you are you saying you need more time or you want to go ahead and do this tonight? No, we're good. Good. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, if our rules are asphalt, then I think we're going to have to go with asphalt, in my opinion. But yes, we'll put sir. it up to a vote with the board and see how they feel. Well, you put up a vote for the asphalt and then vote for overall. Because obviously, if you guys want, everybody wants the asphalt, I'll go with the asphalt. I don't want to turn down the project just for the asphalt as a condition. So if you guys are approving it with the condition of us paving the back parking lot, I'm fine with it. If you guys understand that the stone is going to be in the town's best interest because it, it, it just is going to be a better product and that, that's what we were wanting to have um, but we'll, we'll leave that into your guys' hands. So with all due respect the, the town wants us to have asphalt. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to <laughs> if, if, snore. If it, was but, a, if it was a public street that the town sure. was maintaining uh, we're up to their standards. Yeah. On this is a private area that you guys mm -hmm. will never maintain or spend a dollar doing so the for the town to require that in the back area that you cannot see and they do not maintain. I, I don't know where it came into the ordinance. Obviously, it's, it's new because no one else has it in the area. Um, but just when we do it now and it gets tore up and then they change it back because they're not maintaining it, it's going to break up really easy the first time you get a tractor trailer or delivery truck back. They're constantly making those turns. And then they're going to go back, well, we don't want the asphalt anymore because stone has worked in the past. That's why you see it everywhere. I mean, I agree with him on the, uh, because of my industrial background and paving and yeah. trucks and whatever. My, but, my, my yeah. comment to that is uh, during approval and site plan review, we review uh, recommendations that involve the entire site all the way to the rear of the site, uh, cover setbacks, landscape, paving. Uh, so we encompass the whole site until you have approval. So. Um, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. if, if as far as this asphalt is concerned, if they design the mix and thickness enough, it won't be an issue. And to move things along, I'll make a motion that we stand by our ordinance and move forward. What's the, um, I, know, I know that the um, highway department has put, it's almost like a tar and gravel uh, on some of, the, some of the older subdivision roads. I'm not even sure if that's, it's, it's almost like a crush and run with a tar in it. It's, it's really just uh -huh. It fills in the cracks to, to help the water get in. That's what really pulls asphalt is when you get water in and it freezes. And, and then you get so potholes. They're, they're trying just to fill in those cracks on that one. It's a, it's a temporary yeah. fix. Until no, we've, 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 we've had subdivision things. roads with that type of um, It uh, prolongs uh, the cover. road, so it's not, it's not a, a long-term fix like milling and overlaying it. So it's, uh -huh. it's about a quarter of the price, and it will give you an extra five, six years on that road is what it will end up Right, doing. right. So that's not anything you want to consider? Uh, we can, but it's it's a short term. Same thing. Okay. Uh, you don't have a stone. You don't have an asphalt or something at the top to fill in the cracks. It's not really helping. I mean, that, we can right. do that if that's what you guys want, but it's you might as well asphalt it at that point. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll second the motion to approve. We have a motion on the floor, I think. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. I All opposed? I, I'm not opposed. I just have I just have a question, an observation more so. And Tim, it, it seems to me like we're asking the, the, the people that are bringing jobs and a, a business to Indian Trail to put in crappy asphalt when they know the crushed stone is going to work better and ultimately cost them more money. I mean, is that what I'm hearing? Is that because of our... That was for UDO. The yeah. uh, issue is which I've never understood, and you know, this is just one of these open discussions, but uh, gravel does, I mean, they call it impervious, but you get water soaking into the gravel and it goes into the, into the ground, whereas with asphalt, you get rapid runoff, and which would cause more of a, um, a flooding issue. And of course, we got the, burnt, I mean, the, the detention ponds, but that's something I've always thought that the town should, should address if they, if they don't have to have asphalt because of our flooding problems, do, you know, do you have to require it? But that's something to look at in I, the future. I, I assume that we wouldn't have passed it unless our engineering department had chimed in on it because uh -huh. I'm not an engineer. Right. So I, I can't speak to the to why. Right. Can we leave that aspect of the project open? Can no, you, you can't know? recommend it to go forward with, you know, strings unattached. Okay. 
So well, are you for or so opposed? I'm opposed. Okay. You, you could place conditions on it based on the land use, perhaps. Um, and it sounds like that they they have some flexibility. So maybe you want to identify what that looks like in the back based on the use. That's just a suggestion for the board. That's the same with the UDO rings. We only have to do it if there's vehicle traffic back there. If it's just storage, um, we don't actually have to pave the back. So that would just be, I mean, you're going to have to deliver even if it's just storage back there. So it's either you're going to have asphalt or. Okay. Randy, repeat that. So uh, you could be, and, and understand what you're saying as well, but a little bit more uh, breaking it down by land use. If there's a more intense land use, you could require the asphalt or the hard surface concrete. Um, and because this is a flex space, um, there could be some flexibility in what that end user looks like as to what the board requires. Just a suggestion. And that makes it a little messy, but I'm just trying to, to offer suggestions. So you're saying that we could go with crush and run in, or ABC in the back if they've got a lesser traffic pattern back there? Is right. That... And the board could could go with, you know, the stone as well mm -hmm. um, against, you know, against staff. Um, but of course, the UDO, you know, spells that out. So I think that it, you know, there should be hard surfaces, especially, you know, depending on the, the end user. That's a tough one. Mr. Chairman, I have another, while we're mulling this over, I have a question for the developer or the engineer whichever there's a small sliver of land that moves goes on up close to technology drive mm -hmm. and and i've been talking with the previous planning staff over the years about trying to get that road opened up so we have connectivity out on face church road because the only way in technology drive is from the boulevard and the only way out is out going out the boulevard and now if you're headed back toward monroe you got to go down to the light and make a u-turn i was i was i want to see if the developer would allow us to have that or dedicated to give us easement across that sliver of land down at the very end down there so Technology Drive could be extended at a later date. Um, I know that's not related to your, well, but I mean. I that could be one of the conditions. I mean, I think having an easement across that, that part and that's in lieu of doing the asphalt and, and back would definitely be available for our development. Um, we're not developing anything <laughs> hard back there, but if, if you guys would consider something like that, we would be, I think, more than happy to well, no, I wasn't interested in side. trading. I was interested in just giving it to us, and we're still going to stick with the asphalt as far as I'm concerned. You got my vote because that's what the ordinance says. We approved that years ago, and I think we need to stick by it. I mean, it's, it, you're talking about asphalt breaking up. If you put enough asphalt down and, and put it down correctly as an engineer, you should know that and design it accordingly, and it will be stable, and you won't have an issue with it. So, enough. Okay, well, vote stands be five, four, and one against. Let me, uh, let me make sure we've covered all details. Let me get on my slide. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So now we need uh, to go, we need to make uh, consistency findings and approval or denial. As a process, so, uh, so step one is to vote uh, if you're in favor of the required consistency findings there, one and two. Which we, you know, to vote again or? Uh, that's sufficient, what? Okay. Uh, there needs to be something in your motion that, uh, uh, if, if anything, just reads through that. Uh, or do you want me to read it? Go ahead and read it, and then we'll sure. vote again. Uh, the, the vote was to uh, recommend the required consistency findings. Uh, number one, the proposed UDO amendment is consistent with the following goals of the comprehensive plan. Economic development goal number one, create a more balanced tax base by promoting the development of office parks, business, retail centers, and industrial parks. Promote a diverse local economy that will support varied employment opportunities. Number two, this rezoning request is reasonable, requ is a reasonable request and is in the public interest because it promotes the goals of the Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan in the areas of economic development. And that was 
part of your vote. Okay. Uh, and step two was to make a favorable recommendation to council. Uh, uh, I've got some, uh-oh. For the conditions uh, either to add, let me go back to the draft conditions here, uh, either a motion to accept the proposal for these conditions or to add any additional conditions or to deny or make an unfavorable recommendation. So it sounds like you're making a favorable recommendation. So we'll probably need to take just one more vote mm -hmm. and and cover uh, the conditions here. And if you're you know if you're good with these two conditions, that's what your vote will be for. Okay. We'll count the other one for the consistency statement. Okay, so Mr. Sandy, you made a motion. Do you want to make it again? And as far as the uh, vehicular parking area, I make a motion that it, the parking area in the rear be asphalt or concrete, whichever the developer decides, and in or in in condition with our UDA, what we already have in place. And we also ask for a berm and landscaping in front. Right. Okay. So okay. that will be additional. Okay. I second the motion. We've got a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. And all opposed, are you in favor? This is the second one, right? Second one, yeah. Okay, it's unanimous. Okay. Okay. <coughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. And thank you for bringing jobs to Indian Trail. Okay, next. Okay. Uh, the next is uh, zoning amendment for 6111 Seacrest Shortcut Road, ZM 2019-0046. The request is to rezone approximately 14.34 acres. Uh, the current zoning uh, was a conditional use district, general business district, so it was a CUD GBD. The CUD had an expiration on it. So the CUD expired and town staff went to town council to request a rezoning to drop the CUD. So the proposed zoning is just general business district, just the GBD portion of it. And to take the CD, CUD that's expired off. So the applicant is the town of Indian Trail. Uh, the intent uh, is, like I mentioned, due to an expired CUD. Subject property are the three parcels shown on the aerial map there. What was the intent originally on this property? Uh, it was going to, uh, the intent, I think, was Stinson Crossing, and um, I'm not sure if it was... Uh, yeah, it was a shopping center. Shopping center area at that corner. Uh, and uh, they, they just didn't get things worked out to proceed okay. Okay. in time. So they just dropped it and they're yeah. done. Uh, it, it just sat and expired. Mm -hmm. And then town started, every now and then town, from what I understood, started bringing things forward to correct and uh, that it expired. And it's just kind of a paperwork process to clean, clean things up. We did meet with the... Uh, we did meet with the uh, developer of the property or the owner and uh, informed them of what we were doing and, and kept them in the loop as part of this. Um, here's some photos of the site. Uh, the one to the left looking south across property at Seacrest Shortcut Road. The other photo to the right. Did I say right? The one to the left. The one to the right, looking northwest along Seacrest Shortcut Road with property on the left. The existing zoning, currently GBD. There's a lot of uh, SF1 that's up there, so you can't see that yellow. It doesn't show through very well. Uh, but there's also SF5. Uh, 
There's some uh, Union County property that's up there as well, residential. There's also a neighborhood business district uh, that's popped up uh, just north of the property. Uh, so some things are uh, moving in the direction of the, of the future plan. Here's the future plan uh, that shows for this interchange for the future. Uh, they had shown a lot of mixed use coming into this area for this interchange for the future. So GBD would, would be a good use for it. Uh, town council had, uh, a member had said that it would, made the suggestion to keep it that. So we're proposing it. So do, we ha do we have any idea um, what, what pr proposed businesses could go in there at this point? Any, any current plans? Yeah, does that, uh, anybody got their eyes on something uh, in particular? They, they are uh, looking at things. Uh, they've met with us. The grocery store, we think, maybe? There, there's no plans. I mean, they're, they're still at square one with, with looking at their options, especially with the new highway opening up. There's and just been rumors there for at least a decade that there was yeah. going to be a Publix or a Harris Teeter. And I know we, we talked about a little bit town council several months back. Yeah. So I'm just curious where they, we are now, if, if yeah. they have any proposed. Uh, I, from they, our meeting with them before, um, they are in a mode of, of, of looking at the market. And I think they're looking to become comfortable with, with what the market says for business, for any kind of residential, and, and to see what would be good yeah. proposal for that area. Uh, so uh, th they could be coming forward at some point. But right now, they, they weren't prepared to, uh, you know, we wanted to include them in case they wanted to place a proposal right now. We wanted to, to see if they were ready, and, and they were not. So we wanted to go ahead and move forward with this step just to clean up the records and put them at a base zoning. If something changes in the future, they can come back and go through the process again. Absolutely. Yeah. We've, we've welcomed that, and uh, we've already met with them and answered questions about you know, what step they would do for this or that, uh, showed them other development that's going on around. Uh, so we're, we, we'd love, love to work with them further uh, to see if, if we can help them you know, figure out a process forward mm -hmm. okay. and to see what their options are. Um, so planning department brought, as I mentioned, uh, this matter before the town council on January 8th, 2019. At that meeting, uh, the town council voted to remove the expired CUD through a rezoning, and that's this process here. So the proposed GBD zoning uh, would be consistent with the future plans that are going on for showing mixed use in the area. So staff recommendation is uh, that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan, promotes the goals of land use and housing, it's a reasonable request, and staff recommends approval. Uh, the next steps, similar as before, uh, you've already uh, received your information, you've looked at the findings, and now we need to do the consistency, vote on two votes, consistency findings, and the approval or denial. Okay. Uh, so I can either read this and set it up for you for the vote. Yeah, go ahead or, and do that for us. And okay. We'll get to come up with a uh, So step one, uh, the motion and vote to recommend the required consistency findings. For number one, the proposed UDO amendment is consistent with the following goals of the comprehensive plan, land use and housing goal number three. The proposed map amendment will improve existing Indian Trail neighborhoods to create strong, vibrant communities as it rezones a property with an expired conditional use district designation. And number two, this rezoning Request is a reasonable request and is in the public interest because it promotes the goals of the Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan in the areas of land use and housing. Okay. Do we have a motion? Make a motion that it be approved with the two steps findings here. We have a second. A second. We have a motion and we have a second. Everyone in favor, raise your right hand. And it is unanimous. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second step here. Um, so this is then for the favorable recommendation or an unfavorable recommendation to town council, as presented. I make a motion that we give them a favorable recommendation. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Right hand. It's unanimous. 
Thank you. And now, back to the agenda. Do we have other business? Planning report? Uh, we've got um, the adoption of the 2019-2020 meeting calendar. I well, I'll second anyway. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I mean, just we have a motion. We have a second. Everybody in favor? Raise your right hand. <laughs> Crystal, Crystal will hurt me if I don't yeah. do it right. <laughs> yeah, she's out of the room, and she, yes. so she can't beat you up. <laughs> uh -huh. Here she comes. She's coming back. <laughs> we weren't talking about you. <laughs> and uh, back to you for adjournment. Okay. If there's no other business, no other comments, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Did you motion to adjourn? Uh, motion, to motion to adjourn. We adjourn. Yeah. Do we have a second? I second the motion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> second the motion. Unanimous. Okay. And that was unanimous. Thank you. And give me those minutes so I can sign them. <laughs>